All right. All right, so let's look at this problem. Um, we're given a problem statement, and we're also given our stress-strain curve, okay? And so you see, I prefer these curves right here so that there's no guesstimating, there's no saying, I think it crosses the, the stress-strain curve at this point. Um, we're gonna calculate and interpolate exactly where our stresses and strains are. Okay, so look at this one. We have a 50 millimeter long specimen. It has a stress-strain diagram shown. If P is 100 kilonewtons, determine the elongation of the specimen. So I'm given the P, in giving me the force, they're also giving me the stress, right? But, be, but, but it's different, right? If the, for, if the force is 100 kilonewtons, the stress is, I need to divide it by the area. 100, I think I'm going to change to 100,000 newtons, the area of a diameter of 20, so pi by 4, 20 squared, three, uh, 318.3 mpa all right so they gave me the force but that that really allowed me to find, give the stress so i'm stressing it at 318.3 determine the elongation of the specimen so let's look here hey i am just I, i'm just in the elastic region right i'm just in the elastic region and so you need to be able to given the x you know, value, the, the Y value of stress, can you find the strain? Uh, there's two ways, calculate the E and then, then find it. I like to do similar triangles. I don't know if y'all like this, but I would say that this triangle right there of 450.00225, is the same thing, 318.3 over, I'll call it X. Um, this is E, right, rise over run. That's the slope. But anyway, E equals 318.3 over X. X point zero zero one five nine two millimeters per millimeter. Okay, so what did I just find? find? I found that I found where I was on the x-axis. That is the strain while the force P is being applied. Did the question ask, did the question ask for the strain? The question asked for the elongation. I know this is delta L over L. So, so if I want to find delta L, I need to take this point zero zero one five nine two and multiply it times the length, the original length, 50 millimeters. Okay, yeah, and because I, I know my, I need some units, 0 0.0796 millimeters. 0 0.0796 millimeters. I should have told you to write small because I want to add some more uh, questions to this problem. Okay, so does that make sense? They gave me the force, which was really giving me the stress. And if I know the stress and I have the diagram, I can find the strain. Question didn't ask for the strain. I need to multiply it times the length to find the delta L. Okay, how about after that P is unloaded, what would the strain be? Z zero, but because it's in the elastic region, it would unload back down to zero. Okay, here's another same problem, same, uh, sorry, same diagram, but what if we had a force of p is equal to 150 kilonewtons what if we had a force of p is equal to 150 well what stress would that cause right n over a 150 thousand pi by 420 squared uh 477.46 uh 477.46 mpa so if we had a force of 150 our stress would be ah somewhere somewhere up there out of the elastic region how can i find 
This is 477.46. How can I find that value of strain down there if I know that's at 477.46? Interpolation or similar triangles. All right. So this is kind of how I do interpolation. I don't know how y'all do it. I think y'all are doing it in thermo. Um, right. So I look at kind of point one and point two, and I know it's in between point one and point two. And so I, I like to do top minus bottom over middle minus bottom. Top minus bottom over middle minus bottom. That's that's what I think. That's the, the little tune I say over and over in my head. Top over bottom minus middle over uh, top minus bottom over middle minus bottom. Here, so here, this is what I would do. I would do 500 over 450. No, 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 no. Let me, let me teach you correctly. 500 minus 400. 477.46 minus 450. So I did the top minus bottom over middle minus bottom. <sighs> yes, yes, 450. Top minus bottom over middle. Now, your calculator can actually do interpolation. If y'all prefer, y'all can just, you can just. Let, let your calculator do it for you, okay? Um, and then I come over here to my x-axis, and I would do 0 0.03 minus 0 0.0025, 225, I think, over question mark minus 0 0.00225, 225. Okay, that, that's how I do interpolation. It's probably better to flip both of those equations that's just how I do them. And does it make sense? But this is what you have to make sure. You've got to make sure that that 500 corresponds with it. In the, it's in the same position as the one it corresponds with. And so this 450, let me write this in a different color. The 450 corresponds with 0 0.0025. And so here's what I'm really looking for. This one corresponds with that. Okay, that's not great. Kevin, what do you think? It's that one, yeah. 0. 0.00225. It's really similar triangles that I'm I'm kind of looking at. That triangle and that triangle. I hope to have time that I'll give you some practice. All right, so anyway, this question mark would be point five no that doesn't make sense point oh one seven six point oh one seven so that's at point oh one seven six okay so you've got options either look at similar triangles to find that point or do interpolation to find that point and it's really i'm making it more complicated than it is it's really just math that you could do in high school. If you know this point here and this point here, and you know the height of that point, you could find the base of that point. <coughs> point 0.0176. So let's say, let's say we load it to 150, but then release it, unload it. All right, then this would un unload at the same slope as the elastic region. So I'm gonna draw this pink unloading triangle right here. Here's my unloading triangle. I'm gonna draw it down here. Here's my unloading triangle. I know that I was at 477.46. So I know that kind of the the height of that unloading triangle is 477.46. I know that the slope of that is the same slope, 450 over 0.0025. And I know the base 
is how much it. 225, yes. Yeah. Just the base of that elastic region. All right, so I would say that 477.46 over the elastic recovery is the same as 450 over 0.00. .00 225. Elastic recovery would be 0 0.0023873. Okay, so here we go. Let's kind of put this all together. I know that this question mark, I know that when it was loaded, I was at 0 0.0176. And I recovered that distance, that base of 0 0.0023873. So my permanent set would be what, how far is it still on this axis? Permanent set would be, all right, I started at 0 0.0176, but I came back 0 0.0023873. I recovered. 0 0.0023873 permanent set point seven six zero six no 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 I um, skipped one one too far ahead, oh, ahead. Uh, point oh one five two point oh one five two now and of course, I didn't actually ask any questions. I'm just adding on. But that would be the permanent strain and the permanent set. If I want to know the actual length, if I want to know the actual length that this corresponds to, I would need to multiply it times uh, the actual the times that 50 millimeters. And so it actually is deformed 0.76 millimeters. It's deformed 0.76 millimeters.